Today we're going to talk about scalar quantities and vector quantities. So scalar quantities are those quantities which have magnitude only. For example, mass, time, length, temperature, they have magnitude only. Vector quantities are those which have uh, both magnitude and direction. For example, force, velocity, acceleration, acceleration and so on so what does it mean by having both magnitude and direction let's take an example for example if a person has mass 50 kilograms then i cannot ask the question in which direction does he have the mass 50 kilograms right it does not make sense if he has 50 kilograms he has 50 kilograms there is no direction to it but let's say if a person applies force on a wall then i can ask him the question in which direction did you apply the force did you apply the force to the left, to the right, upwards, downwards, to 30 degrees above horizontal or 50 degrees above horizontal? In which direction did you apply the force? I can ask the question. So yeah, force has both magnitude and direction. Uh, let's, let's talk about arithmetics. Scalar. <clears throat> so scalar arithmetics is very easy, right? If a person has mass 50 kilograms and another person has mass 60 kilograms total mass will be basically adding adding them right m1 plus m2 which i'll get 110 kilograms and the scalar addition is simple scalar multiplication scalar division and scalar subtraction it's all straightforward but now let's see the vector arithmetics in vector arithmetics we are going to talk about adding and subtracting coplanar vectors Coplanar vectors means the vectors which lie in the same plane. So let's see. To study vector arithmetics, let's first learn how vectors can be represented. So I'm going to bring a graph paper here. So let's say this point, this is my origin. So let's say I have a vector in this direction. And the magnitude of this vector is 1, 2, 3, 3 units. And I can represent this vector by writing 3 0 right let's say I have another vector maybe this vector here which has magnitude 2 units and I will represent this vector by writing 0 2 here I have two vectors and I would like to find the sum of these two vectors so what I'm gonna do is move this vector from here to here now you may have doubts that how the two vectors that are at different locations can be the same vector let me clarify it to you uh, by an example if i write a scalar quantity 5 here and if i write a scalar quantity 5 here this 5 they are the same thing right so if i draw a vector here or if i draw this move this vector here they are the same vectors so let's call it vector a and let's call it vector b vector b is 0 2. so what if i want to find r vector such that adding addition of two vectors right so if you want to add 5 and 5 it will be 10 so what would happen if i add two vectors i will get a new vector right so but let's see what do i get i get 0 2 which would give me 3 2 so this is a new vector so 3 2 is basically 3 to the right and 2 upwards so i would get this new vector here so this r vector this new vector is the sum of first vector and second vector so this is the triangle law of vector addition so if i have a vector one v a vector here and if i have b vector here then this new vector this is a vector plus b vector <clears throat> but this does not mean that if the length of a is five and if the length of b is six then it does not mean that the length of this line here would be 11. it does not mean that it means that only sum of this vector and this key vector gives me this result <clears throat> so i hope you got a pretty clear understanding of how vectors can be added let's see further so if i have a vector a here and if i have a new vector vector b here then the resultant vector here this is r vector which is r vector equals a vector plus b vector so let's say i have a vector a vector here and I have a vector v vector here and let's say the angle between these two vectors is theta 
Now I need to find the magnitude of resultant vector. I know the magnitude would be somewhere in this direction, right? So how do I know that the magnitude would be somewhere in this direction? Let's see. To find the resultant of these two vectors, what I'm going to do is move this B vector from here to the ending point of A vector here. And from the triangle law of vector addition, this is my resultant vector from the starting point of A vector to the ending point of B vector. Now I need to find the magnitude of resultant vector, right? So let me construct a line here, then let me draw a perpendicular line here. And my initial B vector was here. So initial B vector was here. I separated it here. I can do that because I already explained it to you. And this angle was theta. If this angle was theta, if this angle is theta, then this angle also becomes theta, right? Now, this is a perpendicular. I need to find the magnitude of R vector. So, since this is a V vector, this is also a B vector. Let's say that B vector has magnitude B and A vector has magnitude A. This part, this section here, if you look at this section there, if you look at this triangle, so this is a B, this is theta, and I need to find this, right? I need, I need to find X. So from your geometry, cos theta is base by hypotenuse, right? So here base is my x, cos theta equals base is my x, hypotenuse is b in this case. So x is b cos of theta. So this section here is b cos of theta and this section here has magnitude a. And yeah, so if this is b cos theta, you can work y, right? Y is this thing, which, which will be b sine of theta. So if you focus on this triangle, I get, I need to find R. This section is B sine theta. And this section here is A plus B cos theta. And this is right angle triangle. Now, from your, from Pythagoras theorem, R equals A plus B cos theta of squared and plus B sine of theta of squared. Then, to work it out it's a squared plus 2ab cos square theta plus b square cos square theta plus plus b square sine square theta then if i take b square common it will be cos square theta plus sine square theta will be one which will give me a square plus 2ab no, sorry, it's not a square theta. 2ab cos theta plus b, b squared. The conclusion here is, if I have a vector which has magnitude b in this direction, and if I have a vector magnitude a in this, of magnitude a in this direction, and if the angle between them is theta, then the resultant r is given by the formula a squared plus b squared plus 2ab cos of theta. So this is the formula which gives me the resultant of two vectors, two coplanar vectors. So we have this formula of finding resultant of two vectors when the angle between them is theta. Now let's see the formula in Excel. For example, let's say there is a mass here. Let's say Ram is pushing this mass with 5 Newton and Hari is also Hari is pulling this mass with 6 Newton. So what is the resultant force on this mass since force is vector we have to it vectorially and to find the resultant magnitude for this question it's easy it be 5 plus 6 equals 11 now let's see the formula and try to get the answer so vector what well, first vector is this this force which has magnitude 5 so it is 5 squared and the second vector is the second force which has magnitude 6 so it is 6, six squared plus 2 times a is 5 times b is 6 times cos theta so what is the theta here theta is the angle between the two vectors right you can see that these two vectors they are parallel and the parallel vectors they have angle theta uh, sorry angle zero so cos of zero cos zero is one which, which then gives me 25 which then gives me 25 plus 36 plus plus 60 if i add them out i'll get 121 which would give me 11 so you can see that our formula is working perfectly correct. Now let's see 
And let's see the second case where this mass it is pulled in this direction by 600 and if it is pulled in this in the other direction by 5 meter what is the resultant force we well, know the resultant force is one right because if somebody is pulling this mass in this direction and if it is the other direction then it will be subtraction now let's find it out by a formula so the, so these are the two forces right so resultant force is 5 square plus 6 square plus 2 times 5 times 6 times now cos of now you can see that the angle between these two forces is 180 degrees not 0 degrees now cos 180 degrees now if I work this out I get 25 plus 36 minus 60 and if I work this out I'd get 1 right so our formula is working perfectly now let's uh, let's see one more question here this question says that two forces of magnitude 6 newton and newton act at point p the angle between them is 40 degrees draw the vector diagram to determine the magnitude of a resultant so we have two vectors of magnitude 6 newton and 8 newton and the angle between them is 40 degrees right so basically i i can use the formula to find the resultant r equals square root of 6 squared plus 80 squared plus 2 times 6 times 8 times cos of 40 degree which would give me the resultant but the question asks, question asks us to find the magnitude resultant by drawing a vector diagram so basically the question asks us to find this resultant r resultant r is somewhere in this direction now how to find by drawing a vector diagram so for this question i'm going to use my scale so from here to here i'm going to draw 8 newton so this line here this vector here represents 8 newton now i'm going to extend this line and i'm going to use my protector to draw 40 degrees from here so 40 degrees this is in this direction right so i need to draw six newtons so So, here, so this is my vector v which has magnitude 6 newton so the resultant is you know it is from this point to this point and if i measure the length of this resultant the length is 13.3 roughly 13 by 3 newton so our answer is roughly 13 by 3 newton so if i use the calculator to find the answer i would get 13.2 newtons which is roughly the same answer so you can see that by drawing a vector triangle we can also find the resultant and using the formula is also the same thing the trick here is I shifted the 6 newton to to the right side right like I explained earlier you can shift a vector now I have one more question here who says that two forces each of 10 newton act at a point P as shown in the diagram calculate the resultant of these two forces so we know the resultant would be somewhere in this direction now we need to find we need to find the resultant so it's pretty straightforward i will use the formula r equals square root of a square plus 2 a square plus b square plus 2 a b cos of theta this is cos of 120 theta is basically the angle between the two vectors you have to remember that which would give me 10 if you use the calculator to calculate this value then you would get the value of 10 so option b is the answer pretty easy now i have with me a little a little bit more complicated problem so let's see the diagram shows the vectors x and y so i have vector x here and i have vector y here so these are the two vectors x and y in which vector triangle does the vector z so the magnitude of vector x minus y so i need to find the z vector z which is x minus y so let's see <coughs> so i can write x minus y as x plus minus of y right so z is the resultant of f x vector and a minus y vector so let, let me try let me try and draw vector z so x vector is in this direction so let me draw vector x first right starting from this point so this is the starting point of x and this is the ending point of x now <coughs> i need to draw y vector so if i draw y vector here so this is y vector right so y vector but i need minus y so if y is in this direction 
then minus y is in the opposite direction. So minus y would be in this direction. So this vector here, it is minus y. So basically z vector would be, would be somewhere like this. So z vector is basically upwards, in upward direction. So here z vector is in downwards direction, so a is not the answer. Here z vector is in upward direction. Hmm, so b could possibly be our answer. Here z vector is in this direction, it's completely incorrect. Z vector kind of in that direction. And here Z vector is down direction, which is not the answer. So B is our answer. Also, another approach to this question would be finding, would be looking at the options. Let's look at option A. <coughs> if you look at option A, if I take this point, Y vector it starts from here and ends from here. And Z vector it starts from here, comes here, and then it's X vector it starts from here and ends here. So basically this diagram tells us that y equals z plus x. So if I bring x to this side it means y minus x. But I need x minus y. So A is not the answer. And if I look at option B, if I look at option B, if I look at this point, z vector starts from here and ends at here, then y vector starts from here and ends at here. And x vector starts from here and ends here. So from this diagram x equals z plus y. So if I bring y here, then I get x minus y z, which is what I need. So b is our answer.